dispatcher is going to come with and some other things that you'll need are all laid out here. So this is your charging cord. Obviously you're going to plug this part into the stature itself and then this part goes into the wall. This is a data storage cord so you're going to transfer all the data that you collect onto a computer. This is a nice little screwdriver. This does not come with the machine, but it's a really good idea to have the paper towels with you to be able to clean off the rim of the chamber. These are a mallet and a nice 2x4 board. The mallet comes with the chamber, but the board does not. This you will use to get the bottom half of the chamber into the ground as safely as you can. Next we have the water cord. So this is going to cha transfer the water from the water receptacle into the satchel chamber. We have taped ours onto a board. The, the board just keeps the cord as far down into the jug as it can. Now we have the satchel unit itself. This is called the main unit. And once we open this up, we can look and see we have up and down and left and right arrows. We have an enter button. We have power and menu. We have a back button. This cord, this is where your data transfer cord is going to go. It's a good idea to keep that closed at all times unless you're using it. Here's where the charging cord is going to go. And then on the side, we have the water cord. This is the air pressure cord. This is the water transfer cord as well. The water output is the input. And then we have the data cord. Next we have the actual chamber itself. This is the cylindrical chamber. This is the top half of the chamber. The bottom half of the chamber is right here. This is the part that goes into the actual ground itself. And as you can see, it has two little hooks that clap onto these hooks and that's what's going to lock it. As you can see there's a little screw right here. That's what the screwdriver is for. If this ever gets too loose then you have to tighten that screw. On the bottom you can see that we have a nice seal. This keeps water inside and keeps it out of the chamber itself. This is the data and water sensor. If you guys ever have a data sensor error that means there's debris on this or and it also measures the water level. So the water is below the sensor, you'll have a water level error. This one is the data sensor cord, the air pressure cord, and then the bigger cord is the water pressure cord. The next one we have is just a water jug. You can use pretty much any water receptacle, anything that's easy to carry but carries a lot of water is nice. This is a water jug that comes with the Satro itself. Any water receptacle works, but if these work for you, then go for it. Again, these do not come with the Satro itself, but having a nice five gallon bucket to carry the chamber in is very helpful. And then lastly, we have a nice bag from pretty much any store. This is waterproof on the inside, so it's nice to carry the Satro unit in. and. Since it is waterproof, you can lay it onto the satchel on top of it when it's raining and that keeps any water out of the satchel itself. So that is all you will need to complete a satchel. Now when you're setting up your satchel, the first thing is, is to find a good spot on the ground. You want something that's representative of the entire area. So you want something that's not completely covered with debris, but you don't want something that has practically no debris on it. Because as you can see, there is actually a lot of debris around here. So you have to have something that, it's not a tire track, it's not a footprint, there shouldn't be much compaction there. Now in order to hammer this into the ground, we're going to use just a normal wood block. We're going to place that right across from it. And then we're going to use our mallet and we're going to hammer this into the ground until the ground is level with this lip. 
Now that you have it in the ground, you can see that the hooks should be clear of any debris. You're also going to want to clear off the area so that you get a nice, good seal. If there's too much debris on this edge, you're not going to get a seal and the water is going to escape. What you're going to do is you're going to take your chamber, the top half of your chamber, unwind the cords. You're going to take the latches. Again, clear the spot of any debris. You want to set it onto the, sec the bottom half of the chamber, and you're going to line up these latches with the hooks, and you're going to close it tight. If it's too hard to latch, then there's probably something under the chamber, and you'll have to unlatch it and look and make sure there's no debris there. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to take these three cords, you're going to come over to your satcher unit and we're going to start plugging these in. The data cord you can see has a little hook on it. That little hook right there is going to go into the indent of the data cord plug. So you're going to line those up, plug it in, and then twist the lock until it locks. You're going to then put the small cord into the small hole and you're going to push until you feel it lock it. A larger plug and you're going to put it into the larger black plug. You're then going to take your water cord you're going to plug the water cord into the white and gray plug. So you should have four cords all locked into place. You're then going to open up your water jug. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to open up. To open your thing, you're going to push down on the gray and then pull up on the black. And then that will open it. Alright, when you're turning on your Satro unit, you're going to press the power button once. You're going to see the last reading that it finished with. If you do not see this, then you hit power slash menu until you do. Hit the enter button and you're going to see the name of the last test you ran. You're going to see settings, runtime, and start. You're going to go to the name. You're going to name it whatever you like. You're going to press the done and then you're going to go down to settings. For what, for our purposes and what you probably want in the ideal world, you're going to want a low pressure of 5 centimeters, a high pressure of 10 centimeters. Your soak time, depending on how wet the soil is, is going to be anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. We just got a rain here, so we're down at 10 minutes, but you can change that. Your pressure cycles, we did three. Your hold time is going to be 15 to 20 minutes. 15 works pretty well. Your insertion depth is either going to be 5 or 10 centimeters, depending on the second half of your chamber, is going to depend on if you're at 10 or 5. We have the deeper cylinder, so we're going to go with 10. If you need to change anything, you're going to highlight it with the black, and then hit enter, and you can change it with the arrows up, down, and then once you're done, you can hit done. To get out of your settings, you're going to click back. This is just going to tell you your runtime. And then you can hit start. It's going to always tell you to check your water supply tubing and sensor connections. It's always a good idea to check those, even if you're like 100% sure you plug them in. It's always a good idea to check them. And then once you have checked them, you hit OK. And you hit OK again. It's going to say equilibrating. And then once it is done equilibrating, it's going to say soaking, and that's when it'll start the time. First thing you do to take it down is to know that it's actually done. Now what you're going to see is that the timer starts over on the original time, and you're going to see the final KFS infiltration rate. First thing you do is you have to close the lid. Close the lid and lock both locks. And then you're going to take off all sensors. To take the sensors off, 
for the data cord, you first twist and then it should pop out. For the other three, you're going to push in either the gray or the black seal, push it in and then pull out the cord. Be careful when you're pulling out the water cord, there will be water in it and you will get wet. Then you're going to put the main satchel unit back into a bag or whatever unit you're using to carry it in. And then that's done, you're going to set that aside. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take down the chamber. You're going to unlock both latches, flip this big latch out from under the hook, and now when you pull up, there is going to be a flood of water, so be careful. You're going to then take the cords of the chamber, and you're going to wrap it around and tuck them into the locks. That way, the cords won't get snapped on anything, they won't get blocked by anything, and they won't get broken. Set that aside. And the next thing you do is you're going to pull up the bottom ring. Now to do this, you either use sheer force to pull from one side up and out, or you're going to have to use a shovel, which in this case, I probably will. Once you have the ring out, try to clean off any large debris. The large debris will interfere with the next test. If you are at the end of the day, it's a good idea to go back to the lab or classroom or wherever you are and clean it off with water as well. Now this is going to be in order of what you see on the Satro machine itself. So first you're going to see the flux. The flux ideally should start high and then go lower as time goes on and then by the end you should have a flat section which represents steady state. This is what you're really looking for. The most likely graph that you're going to see is something that looks a lot more like this. You're going to see something a lot more crooked, but this is all you need to see, that flat section towards the end. Next we have the ideal pressure. This is the one that's most important. If pressure is not correct, you're going to have to redo the run. There's something going on that's wrong. You will not get a right reading. Ideally, you want three high pressure heads and three low pressure heads. Now when I say a pressure head, I'm talking about this is a high pressure head and this is a low pressure head. You see I have one of each in each of these three cycles, we call them. Each cycle would be about 30 minutes if your whole time is 15. The first stage, the first 10 or 20 minutes, depending on what you set the soak time to, that doesn't count in the cycles. Ideally, the cycles would be perfectly flat every time it goes straight from high pressure of 10, straight down to low pressure of 5. More realistically, you're going to see a little bit of variance up in the high pressure. You're going to see a little bit of variance down in the low pressure. And switching from high to low or low to high might not be a completely straight line. But what you really want to see are these high pressure and these low pressure. Next we're going to have the ideal water pressure or the ideal water level, sorry. Ideally, it should be completely straight throughout the entire thing. What you want is a water level of five centimeters. Realistically, you might have some variance in this, but it's going to be very, very small. You're gonna want completely straight. If it's not straight or it's below the five centimeter line, there's a problem and you're gonna have to start over the run. Some common errors or warnings you're going to see. The first one is a data sensor error. For that one, you're going to want to check to make sure the data cord is plugged in, and you're going to want to check that the data sensor, the black tube inside of the chamber, if that's covering in debris, it also can't read anything. 
So check those two if you see that warning. And the next one is the most common one, water level error or water level warning. You're going to have to check a lot of things for that one. The first you're going to have to check to make sure both clips on the chamber are tight. If those are loose, you're going to want to tighten them with a screwdriver. You have to check to make sure the gasket on the bottom of the, the chamber and make sure that's completely sealed. If you see water leaking out the side, that means you have a problem with your gasket. You have to check to make sure the water container is full. If there's not enough water, you're going to have a water level error. And you have to check to make sure all of your hoses are not leaking. If any of your hoses, any of your intake or output hoses are leaking, then you're going to also have a water level error. Sometimes this error is completely unavoidable. If there's a hole in under the soil, if there's some kind of macro pore you're feeding into, if there's an ant hill underneath you, you're never going to get enough water in the chamber to get a good pressure. So you're going to have to start over your start your machine over, you're going to have to move it a couple feet away from 